Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay, that was an epic fail. Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I decided I'm doing something a bit different. So yeah, I have to I wrote some I wrote down some notes. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay. I would like to introduce a new series, which I'm going to call my blue book. If you knew me in high school, specifically the 11th grade, you would know that I had a blue book where I'd write random things, but yeah, mostly my thoughts, my feelings, and yeah, you know this because everyone knew. It was literally a blue book where I'd write blue things. So yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to, I'm attempting to paint a full picture here. A full-ish picture because I can't share everything with you guys. But most of it I want to share. Because you never know who will relate and who it will help. I don't know. So as an intro for the series, my blue book series, I am going to say a couple of things about Myself, like I said things about myself, but I made myself look pretty awesome, to be honest. So yeah, I'm going to say the ugly things about me. I will say first and foremost that I'm an introvert. That's not an ugly thing, it's just a thing about me, but then it's a thing I feel a lot of people don't understand about people, not just about me, about every introvert so yeah i'll be your advocate <laughs> yeah so um i'm an introvert meaning meaning what does an introvert mean i should have googled this an introvert is chill okay <clears throat> so basically an introvert is Someone who prefers to spend time alone, dislikes crowds, usually very quiet, has a low social battery. Okay, so yeah, basically an introvert loses energy from being around a lot of people. But for me specifically, because I don't think everyone is the same, even if you're in a group of introverts, a recipe to be different. I like one-on-one -on -one conversations. I actually gain from them. But once it becomes three people, not so much. There are three people and above, I like literally turn off because I am unable, not, I do not want to, I am unable to participate in the conversation. And not by choice, I can participate, I could participate, like, but it won't be me because I've been forcing myself to participate. You know, talk really slow. One thing about me, I talk really slow if my mind isn't present in the conversation. I'll be like, hmm, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, yeah, I'll say I think a lot because I'm really thinking a lot and, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm an introvert, but I enjoy one-on-one -on -one conversations. And the second thing about me is that I'm an impact. My levels of empathy are very high. People say I'm really dramatic, like people who know me because again, I'm an introvert, so not many people know me. Most people just see me as quiet. The people who know me know me see me as really dramatic and emotional and oversensitive, which might be right, but I'm an empath. Imagine you're in a crowd of people and then there's so much energy, so many so okay whatever you know what i'm saying like this one's feeling sad this one's feeling happy this one's feeling great and then they're absorbing all that energy i literally had to program my brain as a kid to turn off when i'm in a crowd so i really hate crowds so i'm introverted that's an impact i'm lucky crazy <laughs> as an impact you're able to feel deeply with someone they are able to adopt other people's emotions. So basically, half of the time, 
I'm going through stuff that's not even my stuff. And it took me a while to figure this out. Like, if I'm around the sad person, I'll be really, really sad. And then if I'm around happy people, I'll be happy. But then what happens when you're on your own and there's always like this space? That's why I, can, I can't really be an introvert to the extent where I, I enjoy spending time alone, alone. I just like this one person around all the time. Because, yeah, I don't know how to feel when I'm alone because I'm always feeling with other people. So it's really confusing. My first experience, like, the big experience as an impact was when I was in sixth grade, I think. My, oops, my best friend's mom died. And as a class, we had to go for the funeral. And this was the woman I knew, like, hi, hello, but I didn't know her enough to mourn her. Then I got there and then I saw her. I saw her. I saw everyone. The atmosphere. And I started weeping, guys. Like, seriously weeping. I cried the whole time I was there. I felt so sad. And I was so confused. Like, why am I so sad? And then... Another thing that I do, this was in grade 11, for a classmate, he wasn't even like my friend, friend was just a classmate, his mom died, a woman I had never met in my life or known. I go there and I start crying, like, the most, I start doing the most, people are so confused, like, hmm, did you know her though, like, why are you crying, and then it's hard to explain, like, no, I didn't know her, I'm just, really sad because everyone's sad and it's like the put to the you absorb everything like it's not even your choice you want to be alone so that you don't really absorb people's energies but you can't really be alone because at least you want some good energies you get so it's really confusing so yeah i think those are my two most um underlined traits like yeah obviously i'm a lot of other things which we uncover during this series, but those are the two most important things I think that kind of make like the, the method to my madness, I think. Yeah, something like that. Also, on this platform, in this series, I would like to talk about suicide. I think everything in a way points to that, although not everyone takes it that way. But these small underlying, ugly, underlying, underlying, ugly things in society, the stuff no one posts about, the stuff no, okay, people post about suicide all the time, but then it's gotten to the point that it's become part of the fiction, you know what I mean? Because social media is fiction, like 90% of it. So when you start posting about real things, people just always interpret it as more trying to get attention and stuff like that. And then there are some people who post about it to get attention. And then that kind of undermines its significance. I feel like talking about all the mental struggles and the ugly things will kind of also impact the whole suicide issue because it contributes. It, all these small things are just contributing to a bigger picture and which is people taking their lives every day, every year, every word. And it's becoming an increasingly alarming thing. So yeah, I'll start this series by sharing my story and hopefully someone out there will relate and feel connected or like they're not alone because I know in those times that's how I want to feel. So yeah, this is my story. I will now proceed to narrate it in dramatic detail. <laughs> Growing up, I was a really strange kid. Like, you know how people say they're weird? I didn't have to say I'm weird. People said she's weird and you are never in a good way by the way. <laughs> it only said it been a good thing when you know guys would use it as a, as a pretty thing, like to make it weird. I like weird. I was awkward. I didn't talk 
literally anyone outside my family until I was in my grade six. I used to play alone. I never had a single friend until in grade two. And the only reason I had a friend in grade two was that she was so like, like she didn't need anyone to talk. She just needed like a person to sit and to talk to. She was always talking, and I didn't mind because like, oh, I've always been a good listener. But yeah. I like to be heard sometimes. Playtime, I swim and then I had a specific swim. And no one really got me. I didn't get me to be honest. I was I felt like a passenger most of the time. Like my mind was somewhere else and my body was just like supposed to be in this particular space and moment. So to bring the two together was uh, and I was a kid. So yeah, I was not aware that I am completely bonkers so already that kind of made me feel like I was apart from everyone I didn't belong I couldn't connect I didn't talk to my parents I didn't talk to my teachers I didn't talk to the kids at school or at church anyone I only really shared my mind with my brother and sister quite alone I feel sad quite often because of it and I just used to think, I was like, okay, maybe this is life. I was literally just born. So, yeah. And then I hit puberty. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm this weird kid who's now not sure whether the kids or. Yeah, obviously I wasn't an adult. I was just. I was like transitioning, you know, you know what puberty is, right? and you know what it does. So there are all these things, and I'm a girl, so there are all these hormones in my head, mood swings, and stuff like that. The world was out to get me. I seriously believe that the world was out to get me. I became very angry, very bitter, because I thought I didn't, I felt like the world rejected me. Like for literally being born, and the fact that I was an empath. I didn't understand that. I didn't even know what an empath was. I didn't know what an introvert was. I didn't know what an introvert was. I didn't care. Yeah, I was just me in my head. I didn't know that there, these were things. These are things other people feel. And yeah, I thought I was alone in the world to be sure. I thought it was me against the world. So yeah, I said, I used to write and draw a lot. That's how this was. I can't say there was a specific trigger. It was just everything, my whole life building up. I never ever wanted to exist. I used to have a lot of existential crises. Like, why am I alive? Why am I here? When I was a kid, when I started thinking like that. So by the time I was a teenager, I would ask my friends, like, guys, what are we doing? Like, is this li- what is life? Why? Were we born? Where are we going to die? And then people would look at me like, go away. Like, who thinks about that? Then I would wonder, like, seriously, you're living life and you're not thinking about where you're going, what you're doing. Like, am I the crazy one? Vanity. what I found. I had no pleasure in anything. Like everything was just like, what's the point? Okay, what's the point? So several times I would have these emotional blackouts that I didn't know I was having at the time. As I grew up, I kind of had to like, draw out the lines myself because growing up in where there's literally no serious mental difficulties people might be going through. It's a challenge, like, no one talks about these things. No one used to, people are trying to now, but no one used to talk about these things growing up. It was like a taboo. 
I remember trying to tell my mom once that I'm sad and I feel like I want to all the time. And she literally told me that I had demons and I was so scared. Like, I've always just been young. Like this, I started doubting myself. Like, I can't even trust myself. Like, are these my thoughts? Why do I feel like this? Why am I sad? And yeah, looking back now, I kind of understand where she was coming from. But the thing that still gets me is that she never understood and still and probably will never understand where I was coming from. And so there are probably a billion people out there that feel misunderstood but are hiding it because they feel no one will understand. And then you just keep on walking through life, hiding all these things. Like she was blue, he was blue. She kept it hid and spent her whole life looking for another blue color like her. And he did the same. And then the moment came when they met and they just like walked past each other. Because we were both hiding in their blue yet, yeah. looking for other blues. How are you going to find another blue? So I had several attempts, but to be honest, I never wanted to die. I wanted something to live for. Like, who wants to die, right? No one wants to die. We just really want something to live for. We want. something to live for. So yeah. Personally, honestly, actually, this is what it is. For me, for me, my story, I'm grateful it didn't end there. And I believe the only reason it didn't end there is because there's something I still have to do and God knew that and because I was so bent on dying and seriously I'm like I'm going to die and then I didn't all those times I didn't And I thank God every day for that. Now that my mind's a bit clear. Yeah, so sometimes you really go through things. I believe. So you can help other people going through those things. It's okay if things aren't always okay. It doesn't mean you're crazy or you're mad you're supposed to die the thing about life is it's not always okay but it's also not always not okay hmm what am I saying it's not always not okay so try and focus on the times that it's not okay hmm Anyways, I don't know how few things they are posting the series, probably when I feel moved to, and then yeah, so stay tuned, please subscribe, I'm serious, subscribe, and like the video, like don't be a hater, just like the video, like if you like it, like it, down there, and that's it for today.